Hey everyone, my name is Kylie, and uh, I'm going to show you today uh, exactly, step by step, without skipping any steps, how to project the potential of a business idea. And uh, I'm going to start with a single product business idea today uh, and keep it very simple and just give you the basics on how to understand the revenue potential and the actual profitability of a single product business. Um, my background is in doing this for companies. I've been doing it for quite a long time. Um, and uh, what I hope to do is simplify it to where you can create this on your own. So what I'm going to be using is Microsoft Excel. And the first thing I'm going to do to start is uh, type in here in cell A4, hourly wage. Um, the reason I'm doing hourly wage first is because most people, whenever they forecast the revenue potential of a business or the income potential of a business, they completely neglect what their time is worth. And so they wind up only making a little bit of money and not paying themselves anything at all, which ultimately makes the business completely unsustainable. So to start this, we're going to uh, start with one of the most important parts, and that is how much are you going to pay yourself or what is your time worth? Um, so to begin this, uh, I'm gonna say, that uh, the person's time who is starting this business is uh, worth $25 per hour. Um, and so now we'll move down here and we'll type in product one. Um, so the product that we're going to be doing is a, uh, a fidget spinner. The fidget spinners are new, they're hot. I think a lot of people are making them. And so I wanted to show people how they could uh, potentially uh, forecast the profitability of a business making fidget spinners. So let's type in the name of product one and type in fidget spinner. Next we'll do retail price. Retail price is what you are going to charge to sell the fidget spinner. Um, so uh, just off the top of my head, I'm gonna put 15. And if you notice this number here is hard coded. Hard coded means that I typed the number in. It is not a formula in that cell. And since that is a hard coded number, we are going to highlight that cell right up here where this bucket is and fill it with yellow color. What I also like to do is I like to go to the border box and I like to put a thick box border on any of my hard-coded cells. The reason I do this is so I can go in and change them and when what and you'll see as we move through the model, the uh, you'll be able to change the retail price and it'll change your revenue assumptions and your income assumptions all the way down. And uh, so it's more of a dynamic model that we're gonna create and this is standard practice um, for creating these things. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here to and highlight columns A and B and double click where it says width. That way it'll best fit them and uh, that way we quit having that overlap there. Okay, now we're going to say materials and coming down and the materials that, require, that, that a fidget spinner requires are maybe a bearing, um, maybe some, some wood, um, and maybe a little bit of plastic. Um, You'll be able to adjust these to your liking of what actual materials you need and what your costs are per spinner. Um, but this is just to give you an idea of how this, how this goes. I'm also going to go ahead and type in time and then time cost, right? Because you have to factor in the time that it takes you to create a fidget spinner. So we'll say here that a bearing costs $3 a piece. Uh, the wood you use may cost $2 a piece, and you may use a dollar worth of plastic in every fidget spinner. And let's say it takes you uh, a quarter of an hour to produce these fidget spinners, or 15 minutes. And so now we're down here to time cost. Uh, time cost is uh, going to be a formula. So uh, before, we, before we do that formula, let's go ahead and highlight these four cells. So to highlight these cells, we're just gonna go where that white cross is and drag them down. And we're going to hit this yellow box, this yellow fill button up here again. And then we're gonna highlight these three here because they kind of go together and put a box around them. And then the time one is slightly separate. So we'll put a separate box around the time one. Okay, so now we'll go up here to the materials box and we'll hit the plus button. We'll type in SUM for sum, then hit tab. Tab will uh, initiate that function. Um, then we'll take the white cross and drag down into the three cells we want to uh, sum up. 
and we will uh, hit the close parentheses button and then type hit the enter key. So in this case, you can see that bearing of $3, wood of $2, and plastic of $1 has a total cost of $6. So now in the, the time cost cell, we'll go ahead and hit the plus button again, and we will click on the hourly wage. An hourly wage um, is uh, how much that we are gonna pay ourselves per hour. And then we'll hit the times, which is the asterisk, and we'll multiply it times the uh, amount of time that it costs us to produce a fidget spinner. So we'll hit that, and then we'll hit the enter button again. And so our time cost for a fidget spinner is the materials cost plus the time cost. And so we'll go here and we'll type in total cost. And we'll hit the plus button again, and we'll add the materials cost plus the time cost. And that'll give us our total cost per fidget spinner. Now we wanna know how much are we making per fidget spinner at this point, and it's called your gross. Um, what are we making gross per fi fidget spinner? And gross would, would mean that, what are we making before the rest of the expenses uh, of operating the business are incurred? So our gross per fidget spinner would be the retail price minus the total cost. So we're gonna hit that plus button again. We're gonna go up here to the retail price cell and we're gonna hit the minus button and we're gonna subtract the total cost. And so we're gonna see that at a retail price of $15 with all these other yellow cells being the same, uh, we're going to have a gross of $2.75 per fidget spinner. So let's go ahead and adjust some of these variables to kind of just see how they work. So say you don't think it's gonna take you a quarter of an hour, you don't think it's gonna take you 15 minutes, you think it's gonna take you six minutes to make a fidget spinner. So in that case, you type in point one right here. And of course, you can see your gross goes way up because your time cost went way down. Um, let's say we want to charge $20 per spinner. We'll come up here to the retail price yellow cell and type in 20 right there and hit enter and you'll see your gross goes up to 11.5. So now you can see you're making a little bit more money per spinner. One thing I noticed too is that we need to go ahead and highlight this cell, this 25, since it's hard coded, the same way we have these other cells highlighted. So hit the, the yellow fill button, hit the thick box border button, and there you go. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to a cell somewhere you know, along here, say F4, and I'm gonna forecast by the week. So I'm gonna say weeks, and then I'm gonna say one, and then I'm gonna to go to the next cell, two, go to the next cell, three, go to the next cell, four. And once you have about four numbers in a row highlighted like that, you can select all of them, and then come down here to where that cursor turns black into a black cross, and use that and drag it across, and you can see the numbers are increasing. So we'll go out here to about 20 weeks. It's about five months. So we're gonna say weeks there, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all those numbers and push Control B to bold them, and uh, that way they stand out a little bit more. Then I'm gonna come right below weeks, and I'm gonna type in number sold. And then below number sold, I'm gonna type in product number one. And then below product number one, I'm gonna type in revenue. So once again, see uh, we have a little overlap here with product one. I'm gonna highlight the whole column F and double click just to get a best fit there. Um, then we know that in product one in this cell, that's gonna be a hard coded cell. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it with yellow and put that thick box border on it too. And you'll see how that works in just a minute. So after we go in and make this cell yellow and put that thick box on it, I'm gonna go up here in the same column F and type in weekly growth rate. We also have another little overlap there. And so I'm going to double click to get a best fit. This is also going to be a highlighted cell and a trick to do it quicker is to click on a cell that has the formatting that you like. In this case, it's this yellow cell with the black box. Go over here and click on the Format Painter button, 
and then click on the cell that you want to look just like that. So there we go, weekly growth rate. So I'm going to set my weekly growth rate at 5%. So I typed in 5, and then I hit the percent sign, and then I pushed enter. And for the first week, I expect to sell 5 fidget spinners. So to get to my revenue for the first week, I'm going to hit the plus button. I'm going to go up to sell G6 in my case, the product, the number I sell in week one of product one. And then I'm going to multiply that times my retail price over here, which is sell B8, $20. Now before I hit enter, I'm going to hit the F4 key. F4 locks in cell B8 so that whenever we expand this formula across the 20 weeks, it's always multiplying by that cell and it doesn't move with us. That way we can always adjust that single, single cell and it will affect the whole model. So now we can hit enter and as you can notice that there's dollar signs before the B and before the 8 and that means that cell is locked. So, Selling five fidget spinners times the retail price of $20 gives us $100 in revenue. Now I'll come down here and we'll type in COGS, cost of goods sold. So what is our cost of goods sold on this? Well, we have materials and we have time. And you could, you could simplify this by just taking your cost of goods sold and, and making it multiply times the number that you sell in week one times that total cost over there and sell B15. But I wanna break it down a little bit more so we can see it expand as we go across. So in order to do that, we're gonna hit the plus key again. We're gonna go up here to cell G6 and multiply cell G6, that, that five, times the total cost of materials right over here in cell B9, that six. And once again, we wanna hit that F4 key so that cell locks in. So it's gonna cost us $30 in materials to produce five fidget spinners. Now for time, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna multiply this five, but we're gonna multiply it times the time cost right over here in cell B14. F4 again, this cost us $12.5 in time. So our total cogs is the sum of those two. So plus key, sum, tab, highlight the cells, hit enter, and our total cogs is $42.50. So our, our gross on that total of five products, or a total of five fidget spinners, is going to be the revenue minus the total cost of goods sold. So we hit the plus key, we hit revenue, that, that cell G7, and we subtract it, times the total COGS, and we know our gross is 57.5. So that is what we have left in order to market these things, in order to pay for the website, in order to pay for the hosting, in order to pay for any sort of credit card fees, sales expenses, insurance, rent, if you go to that, that way. I'm sure this is just a small business, so you probably won't incur any of those expenses at this point. So we'll keep it relatively simple.